areas. So coming to the syllabus, uh, we have seen a very uh, glimpse of the various uh, topics of uh, unit one, uh, role of algorithms in computing. Uh, we, I started introduce you uh, what is an algorithm, uh, how to uh, write an algorithm, how you should view algorithm as a technology. And with an example, insertion chart, how this algorithm can be uh, developed. So that you should uh, know. So let me refresh that topic, uh, how uh, algorithm can be designed for insertion chart. Then uh, I will come to a topic called uh, asymptotic notation, uh, followed by the uh, recurrence method. So let me start the topic uh, insertion chart. Again, so anyhow, we have seen, but uh, I should uh, once again uh, want to refresh those ideas. Um, see, what is an insertion chart? So it is a shorting. It is a technique which is used to uh, short the given uh, set of numbers. So what is the input for this uh, particular task? A sequence of numbers that is uh, denoted as A1, A2, A3, etc. up to AN. What might be the output? Some reordering. Uh, you may say that as a reordering or you may say that as a permutation. And that reordering may be uh, A1 dash, A2 dash, etc. up to AN dash, such that A1 should be less than A2 dash, and A2 dash should be less than A3 dash, and A3 dash should be less than, etc. like that it goes. And finally, it goes up to AN dash, AN dash. So this is what input and output. So remember students, whenever uh, uh, you want to design an algorithm, first you, you should know about what is the input to the problem and what is the output that we are going to uh, receive after solving the problem. That thing you should clear. So only after uh, that thing is clear about the, that is, what is that thing? That is the input and output uh, about a particular problem. If you are uh, thorough with that, uh, then only you can be able to uh, correlate this is the input given based on the input given where you have to modify the input and how to produce the output, how to produce the output in such a way that you should uh, analyze that such a way that you should analyze it. The numbers that we wish to start. What is that? It's, it is in general when you are going to uh, solve the problem, uh, you should say that it is a key. It is a key. Whenever you choose a number, whenever you choose a number, it is treated as a key. So it is not a number, it's a key. So you, you should choose a key that is a number and that key should be compared with the neighboring key that is another number. So accordingly, uh, you should do the task. So what is the algorithm here is uh, how to understand this uh, problem is you should understand this insertion chart uh, problem is a problem with respect to uh, shorting a deck of cards. That is you are provided with some deck of cards in a non-random manner. And you wish to arrange the cards uh, in a uh, in a manner that is to be uh, arranged in a uh, increasing order, increasing order with the same kind of flower. So you, if you notice that, so uh, you if you could see that image in the uh, PDF file. Are you are you? It is possible for you to see that image. Image Yes, sir. Yeah, yes. Yes, sir. So, yeah, yes. So it, it is seen from the image that there are a set of uh, colors, uh, the similar kind of flower, uh, and we have a set of cards, and your uh, objective is to choose that. See why the seven is inserted uh, between five and 10? Because 10, uh, seven is a lesser number 10, 10, and a seven is greater than number five. So the proper position for the seven is to insert it between the five and 10. Hence the name called the insertion set. Insertion set. When you want to analyze the algorithm or how to this insertion chart is carried out, uh, you look at the picture here. See, this is a card, uh, five, two, four. Imagine you, uh, you have the card number five, two, three, four, six, one, three. Uh, that is the total six cards in your hand. And the above number, that is one, two, three, four, five, six are the position. In position one, you have card number five. In position two, you have card number two. In position three, you have card number four. Like that, you should understand. You should not confuse with that one, two, three, four, five, six with that number. So that is the index value and this is the actual value, right? So why I am stressing about this when you are going to write an algorithm. So you should not be confused with the index value as well as the key value. Index value is the location which is used to refer the uh, key. key. So the first element is you should keep as it is. The next index position 
the next index position key is uh, taken and the number is a 2 now you have to compare the 2 and the 5 so if you compare if you find that uh, 2 is lesser than 5 then you should do a simple exchange it's like that it goes like that it goes so once it goes from the first index position to sixth index position then it is said that one pass is set to complete then what you should do then you should start from the second pass in the similar way what you have done in the previous case so if for n number of passes uh, at one time at one kind of pass you may end with a number in a starting order in a starting order. so this is what the incessants are and it can be explained or illustrated in the help of a diagram and the code here is see i already told that key is a of j for j equal to 2 to a dot length so a is the given list a dot length is uh, totally six element is there six element so where where it when it is which position it is started it is started from the second position it is started from the second position so key equal to a of j that means that means the second position element is taken and that second position element is and that second position element is So in that second position uh, element is uh, 2 and that 2 is uh, assigned as a key and then the uh, index value is increased uh, from first position to second say why i is taken as j minus 1. So j minus 1 is 2 minus 1 that is 1 so i equal to 1. So now we in the inside the while loop we are checking. inside. So this is the while loop which plays a vital role for comparing with the uh, neighbor, neighboring elements, neighboring elements. So this is what the instructions are. Uh, but uh, when this sort is uh, algorithm is to be given, you should give uh, illustration for this algorithm in these various uh, topic. So you please note it down: uh, initialization, uh, maintenance, and termination. So all these kind of uh, subtopics you should remember whenever see in the textbook as far as in the syllabus it is given that insertion chart but you will be asking to uh, illustrate or uh, you will be asking to write something about uh, some other kind of chart. So it should be in that format. So uh, whenever you st start an algorithm uh, you should discuss the algorithm with respect to uh, how much uh, or what are the steps that are needed to initialize. And what are the steps that are needed to maintenance? And what are the steps that are needed to uh, terminate? So in that case, you have to explain. So when you come to the in, in, uh, insertion chart, the initialization is what is initialized first? First of all, the index value j is initialized. So index value j is initialized. How to what value it is initialized? The j value is initialized from two. And coming to the maintenance. And coming to the maintenance, the, the maintenance is uh, nothing but uh, if you want to uh, store the element in a location, uh, that location should be maintained. Say, for example, you should keep remember what is the element that is available in A of J minus 1 and what is the element that is present in A of J minus 2, uh, like that. So in every position of the element, you should uh, maintain it. Why you should maintain? Because it is the, the process is not going to end in one pass. The process is getting continued among the several passes. So in each pass, you should remember the value. So you should not be overwritten or you should not forgo the position as well as the value. So in that case, you should keep maintaining the value. So maintenance is more important followed by initialization. And termination. So at what, uh, see, if you keep on doing it, if you keep because uh, because, see, because this is an iterative process, sharding is an iterative process, you keep on doing the same activity again and again. So what you have to think is at one point of time, you have to think about where you have to terminate and uh, what is the termination criteria. So if you keep on doing it, it may go up to infinite loop. So you should think about. So the conditions that you have, the, the condition that you have taken about uh, the thing is, so you should think about the uh, idea uh, or what is what should be the uh, criteria to make the program to terminate and come out of come out producing the result. So in that case, see what is the termination condition here is you should take the jth value should that should be greater than a dot length. 
and both should be that this j value as well as a dot length value should be equal to the number of elements that means if all the elements have been uh, if all the elements uh, have been scanned and it is uh, verified uh, for uh, proper exchanges and proper reordering then what you can do is you have to terminate the process then you have to terminate the process so uh, that is the idea so uh, so this is the way in which you have to uh, seek through the algorithm and seek through the process but you should keep it in mind keep it in mind because uh, the, this algorithm has to be represented in a short form like a pseudo code so while you are writing the pseudo code you should have certain uh, conventions like that is symbols or keywords how to write uh, or how to do in uh, indentation uh, where you have to do the indentation where you have to give the comment line and everything so when it is come to the pseudo code form look at it so this is the pseudo code form so you should give a proper title and the proper site title should be in uh, capital letters and you should accept an argument and if, how that argument will be utilized in the program see wherever you have keyword for uh, to uh, while these are all keyword and uh, for everything you should have a proper identification see for is started here but the key value is started something inserted likewise you should have see while is here so like the, the indentation so why this indentation is there because it will give more clarity to the code it will give more clarity to the codes that's why you should follow the indentation so there are many conventions like this like a keyword uh, like the other uh, variable names or comment lines so for everything see while preserving the clear uh, greatly reduces the clutter clutter means uh, something like confusing uh, something like clumsy clumsy so it will reduces the clumsiness on the other hand it will preserve and as well as improve the uh, that means enhance the clarity so that's what you should uh, remember that this is what you should remember that so that is the pseudo code convention that is you should follow so comment lines and everything so whenever uh, see uh, this days these days they will not ask you uh, the theoretic question to explain but they will ask you a uh, mcq type question so what you have to do is you just uh, go through the key points so what is uh, organic common data into objects uh, what objects are composed of um, objects are composed of attributes like that so we pass the parameters to a procedure by value so what they will given is they will give you a snippet of code they will snippet of code how the values are passed they will ask the question like that so you should that whether the value can be passed either call by reference or call by either call by reference or call by a value so in that aspect you should do it in that aspect you should do it so that's what i'm insisting you um otherwise uh, see say for example see look at the keyword short circuiting short circuiting so they will ask what are the operators that are treated as short circuiting operators so you know that the boolean operators like and or but you, you are not familiar with the word short circuiting such as because the short circuiting is the word uh, dealt under electrical domain but how that word comes here because uh, you may heard about and uh, and gate or gate uh, so like that so that the same terminology is brought here so that's why the same word also has been used here like uh, short circuiting right so that way you should uh, keep reading the uh, textbook in order to make you prepare for the uh, mcq type question so yesterday i uh, touched a little bit about asymptotic notation what is mean by asymptotic notation it is a kind of notation that uh, tells about the uh, running time of an algorithm in an asim in an assumption manner in an assumption by assumption by assumption or through assumption by assumption or through assumption uh you should convey you should convey see this is algorithm say for example mm, if you discuss with your uh, parents uh, your father or uh, your mother they have always some plan about your future they will always have a plan about your future they may invest money in some uh, some uh, what's that some finance or bank uh, saying that uh, so if you do so if you do so then it will uh, come like this and that will be useful for us in future likewise uh, likewise when your father or when your mother are invest in some kind of land or some property they may have a vision so after 20 years why we have to buy this area and what is the need of buying this area because it is totally underdeveloped 
so but that uh, you are maybe if you discuss with your father you or mother you see me say that no no uh, at right now this will be like that maybe at year goes as year goes so many developments may come into picture uh, as far as the coimbatore city is concerned it is going to be a smart city so there are uh, most investment has been uh, happened in order to develop the city so if you feel that some area is uh, totally under developed and in that area some uh, property is uh, being there for uh, selling and if your father is buying so you may not uh, you may not have a clear cut idea you may uh, ask your father you are buying this uh, daddy because the area is not that much developed what is the use of it but your father may give you a clear option no uh, by means of simple assumption that this uh, this and all is going to come here this uh, this and all futures and this and all benefits are going to come here so what you can do is so what you can do is you can go and you can use with uh, some other uh, uh, assumptions uh, so with this uh, we, I, we, i am ready to invest and uh, if that investment will be a, a, a should definitely a helpful for uh, the our growth that means uh, for your future and your growth in the same way when you wrote an algorithm when you wrote an algorithm you should think about that so right now i i wrote an algorithm and my cpu processor capacity is uh, this much and my computer bit system is 64 bit computer system so originally when i studied my ug course or pg course the, the computer i used was a 16 bit computer uh, then 32 bit computer have came into existence until last couple of years back we commonly use 32 bit computers nowadays the computers are coming with 64 bit computer so imagine this so in the 64 computer you can give a number of range uh, that is of size 64 bit so now if you are write a program to short a number of two digit or three digit or even 10 digit imagine a number that is to be shorted or of 64 digit so if that is the situation what you can do what you can do so your computer should be a sufficient enough say for example you are written a, you have written a program and that program is in a position to accept only 64 bit number now if you are converting a machine to a 128 bit machine say for example and if you want to introduce a 128 bit uh, number then whether your program will be supporting no definitely won't because your program will become obsolete will become outdated because your program will support only 64 bit so likewise you when you are writing a program or when you are writing an algorithm you should always think about the capability as well as the capacity of the program so when you are thinking about these uh, things so what you can do is uh, always uh, you go for scalability so what do you mean by scalability i wrote a program for this thing what might be the uh, so likewise you should say in a say so whenever you solve any algorithm or whenever you try to uh, do any uh, algorithm or a program and if you want to sell that algorithm or if you want to sell the program so you should uh, along with the program itself you should uh, say about say for example if you buy a product the product will be saying that two years warranty uh, after that something else uh, happen mean you should go for a, a paid service until 2 years you will be given free service so what is what that person or what that seller is thinking about the product say so they telling you two years it will be a guaranteed product no service complaint will come likewise uh, when you are writing a program or when you are writing an algorithm if you are about to uh, sell this uh, algorithm or program and what you have to th think about is uh, this algorithm may uh, take this much amount of time when we increase the uh, number of inputs or when the number of inputs uh, is of this kind of order then it may so you have to say three things what is the worst case uh, best case as well as average case likewise we have referred three things uh, theta notation um, uh, what is the theta notation big o notation as well as uh, it is visible theta notation uh, big o notation and omega notation so this is what uh, yesterday class we have discussed uh, today what is the point that we are going to discuss is a kind of uh, thing Uh, that is uh, discussed in the syllabus. How that the cost function, uh, that means the asymptotic notation with respect to a standard function, can be solved or can be created. So the most important thing is recurrences. Under recurrences, you have two methods. One is substitution method. Another one is a recursion, uh, recursion tree method. So this, this is the two methods we are going to discuss here. So what is that uh, method? Is, is it, this method is always based on the principle dividend conquer. so dividend conquer uh, by the name itself if you could see that dividend conquer is the two step but the actual step is uh, actual step involved is divide conquer and come divide conquer and combine so that is the three major step uh, 
that is the three major step involved here involved in here and you should take it according to the uh, problem that you are going to solve that you are going to solve so when you take the case uh, when you take the case when you take the uh, problem uh, what is that uh, so normally uh, what is it the dividend conquer problem is see a problem is given and if you feel that the problem is very bigger enough uh, so what you got to do you have to divide the problem so that if you divide the problem we can keep on dividing the problem so that the problem is of a very smaller size and it can be solved in a very uh, small unit of time so what is the thing each sub problem can be solved so each sub problem can be solved in the same manner as the other problem so if you solve the sub problem the sub problem solution will be combined to together form a another sub problem that sub problem will be solved then it is combined then sub problem so what is that every time you are applying the same principle repeatedly over the same problem but the size of the problem is varying so my first of all the problem is very minute uh, then the problem will become very tiny then that the problem will become very small then the problem will become average then the problem will become very uh, big and like that it will go and uh, like that it will keep on increasing hmm? so that is the uh, idea so what is the term that is used is uh, see what is my iteration iteration is repeatedly doing the same thing uh, with respect to uh, some condition but what is recursion is see the problem is the same thing you are doing it but uh, what is the thing the thing get expanded the thing get expanded the, that is from the tiny problem to the uh, small problem to the small problem to the average sized problem from the average sized problem to the biggest problem likewise the problem get expanded so that is the uh, thing that you have to think about it that is a, so when you are going to discuss those kind of problems those kind of stuff so you need to use the keyword called recur recurrence so what is a recurrence and how it is represented and how it is presented say for example uh, let me take a recurrence relation uh, for a merge chart for a merge chart uh, t of n equal to theta of 1 that means if the number of uh, inputs to a problem is equal to 1 that is if you have only one input to the problem then the uh, t of n that is uh, worst case running time what is dfn is worst case running time of a program then it will be uh, theta of 1 then it will be theta of 1 in case if that n is greater than 1 in case if that n is greater than 1 then uh, it should be uh, 2 into t of n by 2 plus the theta of n so that is the case here so the, if that is how this will be arrived how this will be arrived so this will be arrived in a very uh, uh, very uh, perfect manner that is uh, that i have discussed yesterday that uh, uh, you have a program you see if you look at it here where is it so you have a sufficient associated cast function uh yes, we, we, i think we have a, we have one point there so c1 c2 c3 you have to multiply the c1 and c2 c3 and accordingly you got the value uh, final value and then you have to uh, look for a generic function and then you want to attach the generic function with that so that is generic function the t of n is this is the generic function uh, t of n that is the time consuming by the merge chart that is worst case running time of a merge chart is t of n equal to theta into n log n but if you want to represent that worst case running time as a recurrence relation, then it will be theta of 1 if n equal to 1. Uh, in case if n is greater than 1, then you should be the relationship. So what are the methods are available uh, to uh, solve that uh, problem? There are three methods available. Uh, substitution method, uh, recursion tree method, master method. So the substitution method, the substitution method, uh, we guess a bound and then uses the mathematical index and principle to solve the um, or to prove whether our guess is correct or not uh, what is recursion tree method is that is just now i explained you should, you should be explained with the help of a recurrence relation and that recurrence relation always attack two different forms one is what is the uh, notation that you should define when the number of input is uh, equal to 1 in case when the number of input is greater than 1 so what is the uh, uh, relation that you should follow in order to understand the uh, running time of algorithm uh, but in general you can uh, define the whole uh, recurrence relation into a single one 
single one. What how you can prepare the single one? Like I told the worst case running time of a metric are the theta of n log n. That is you want to come in. So how that is produced? How that recurrence relation that is produced? That is produced with the help of uh, three methods: substitution method, recursion tree method, and the master method. Out of the three methods, uh, as per your syllabus, you should study about the two methods: substitution method and the recursion tree method. So let me explain this method in the uh, subsequent classes. Um, as of now, uh, I will close the uh, today session.